You asked for it, and I listened. So today on Jairus of All, I'm gonna fill you in on and upgrade my micro hyper efficient Nautilus rocket mass heater that's vertically oriented of awesomeness. Just about a year ago, I built what the hippies referred to as a rocket mass heater. It's a hyper efficient wood burning stove, basically that takes all of the heat out of the exhaust and stores it in mass inside of the space that is insulated that you want to keep warm. If you want to watch the build videos, they'll be, is it that corner? And it'll be on the end screens. But now let's talk about how absolutely wonderful this rocket mass heater has been. Quick recap to get us all on the same page. This is my micro rocket mass heater and it looks pretty big, but this is tiny compared to normal ones that would take up half of my garage. So intake here burns down there in my swirly Nautilus chamber, comes up here, dumps heat radiantly out into the room to warm it up quick there. The air drops back down, goes through a series of pipes all wiggly through here, and then it comes up and that's my exhaust. So you burn stuff, it's super hot, it's super efficient. And then all of the heat that's in the exhaust, that energy is stored inside of the mass here and released into the room and it warms the garage over days and it works very well. I just made a slight modification the other day and I should have done this a long time ago on the intake. I put this little adapter in and I actually shaped it very well so that it fits nice and tight, but I also put some new concrete around here and there is fire rope on the inside that seals to this piece so that I don't have any leaks on the intake. I shouldn't have leaks on the intake because normal rocket mass heaters just draw air out of the room and it pulls down and nothing comes out. But mine needs this. My heater has an external intake, which most of them don't because the hippies think that drawing cold air from the outside into the room is better because then you have fresh air, but that defeats the purpose of trying to heat the room. So mine pulls air from outside and it's insulated so that the cold air stays cold. In some of the videos that I watched, they tried to plumb cold air from the outside but because they don't know thermodynamics. They put the intake at the bottom. If you bring it in down here, you have cold, very dense air that's heavy and you're trying to draw it up and then into the heater, which is stupid. You want that column of cold air to flow down. This increased the efficiency of my heater, but I also put a computer fan inside the outlet to the outside so that I can force air through it. So with this airtight sealed adapter and this insulated cold air tube, and a piece of foam in the end, I can keep the cold air out when the heater's not running. And then when I want it to run, I plug it in here. And with that attached and sealed with glass fiber fire rope, the whole way around everything, it is a completely sealed system that pulls very cold air in, has a direct vertical tube that feeds down. And then I get forced or normal super cold air feeding my heater and it doesn't affect the temperature of the interior of the garage. This is my radiant heat exchanger, which is made out of helium tank. The hippies do this, they usually do it with big drums, like giant 500 gallon drums or something like that. This thing's tiny. I was afraid that it might burn through the top of it because it gets so hot, but this is actually held up really well. Same one that was on there in the first place. Now, when the air goes down and it burns in my Nautilus chamber that you'll be seeing right now, and then comes up into this, Helium tank, which by the way, is from my Endeavor video when I ruined a kid's birthday party. It cools, so it's all about the balance. Colder air here, hotter air here, then the air gets cooler, so it wants to drop again compared to that air. So you have this up and down flow that's forced by the density of the air. And then when it comes into here, it cools more as it goes up through this, which is not good and brings me to the problems with this rocket mass heater. The hot exhaust gases go into the bottom of this thing, and as they rise through it, they cool and therefore become more dense and try to reverse the flow, which makes this thing exceptionally efficient because the air is moving very slowly through it and it absorbs all of that energy and saves it in the room and thus has made this pipe never be even warm enough for me not to be able to touch. People usually talk about house fires and it's usually because your chimney or your whatever gets so hot that it catches stuff on fire. I've never not been able to touch this. I think the hottest it's ever been is 150 degrees. The next issue is that it went to here and I was going to plumb it out the window so that it continued to go vertical and I couldn't do that because the window doesn't open on the top it only opens on the bottom so I had to root it back down and then back up and it screwed up my flow. So the rocket mass heater runs on its own it does keep the flow going the right direction but it doesn't do it well enough to get really good flow and a really hot fire which is why I have the external air intake and the computer fan. And now that I have that dryer hose insulated, it'll keep that air nice and dense and cold and it won't warm up as soon as it comes into the room 
and try to create a competing chimney. Now, the next problem is that all of these turns all through this thing and all of the turns that it makes when it goes through this thing make it really difficult for all of those gases to flow at all. So it does flow, but that computer fan helps out a lot, which since I just use scrap stuff to burn, like sticks from the yard and wood that I get for free from people, this thing basically heats the garage for free, except for the cost of running one computer fan for a couple hours when I want the garage to be warm, which is very inexpensive, which uses half an amp of 12 volt DC power, which is what this plug puts out. So when I run this fan for a couple of hours, it's like having a light turned on for a couple hours. That is what the consumption of this heater is. It's wildly efficient, even with forced air. But with the insulated intake pipe and the upgrade that I'm gonna do right now, this thing will work even better. And I won't have to go outside and pull the chimney down from the tree, which you can see in part four of the build videos. And I'll be able to shut off the flow right here cap the intake pipe and it'll be very easy to use. One thing that the hippies don't tell you about when they talk about how amazing these rocket mass heaters are is that it does take time to make it run. You don't just pay somebody to come fill up your fuel tank with a bunch of oil and then turn your heater on. You have to feed it fuel. And since mine has a small intake because it's a micro system, I can't put that much wood in at one time. So it does take about an hour a day if I wanna get the garage warm to sit there on the floor and split small pieces of wood that I've cut to the length that will fit in the intake pipe. Kind of a pain, but it is heat for free, so that's cool. Just know that if you're gonna make one of these things, you are gonna have to take some time every time you wanna run it to cut wood down to the right length and then split it into small pieces because you need that surface area to be able to release the fuel from the wood fast enough that you get a really good fire inside your chamber. Now my chamber is all steel, which they say that you can't do, and so far it has worked out perfectly well. The only issue is that when I first start my fire, I do get some smoke out of the exhaust, not a lot, but there is some. After it's run for a few minutes even, the steel is warmed up enough on the burn chamber and the heat riser pipe that I don't get any smoke anymore. Everything that comes out is just steam because the burn inside that thing is extremely efficient. So no emissions if you're one of those people. I don't know if you noticed, but there's super shiny, awesome golden names on the table now. I had a lot of patrons that wanted to donate more than a dollar to me. Initially, you may remember from some of my old videos that I talked about how I felt a dollar should unlock access to everything on Patreon because if you're willing to give something to the channel, then you deserve to get the reward because a dollar for one person might be the equivalent of five dollars for another person. But a lot of people asked me if I would create another tier and I didn't know what to do for it. And then I decided that I would make their names gold because I love gold. But seriously, I felt like the people needed recognized for donating more. So you get gold names if you're a $5 patron. Thanks you guys, I appreciate it. Came in handy, especially for this build to keep my garage nice and warm so that my cameraman Kevin doesn't freeze his toes off. <laughs> Kiefer, Dan, Sam, Gordy, Ben, Alec, Pete, Ninja Long, Dan, Trevor, Frankie, Doherty, and Dweek, Jacob, Joey, Big John, John, Quentin, Tito, Kenny, Josh, Blaze, Zach, Timer, Rudy, Dana, Roy, Cameron, Westy, Andrew. Thanks, guys. Oh, and there's one other problem that I forgot to tell you about. Let me show you. To start the fires inside of this thing, whenever I throw some wood in there, I throw some paper in, hit it with the blowtorch for about five seconds, and then it's running. It takes nothing to start this thing. But once it's started, and if I don't have really good flow going through it because the heat mass transfer portion isn't hot enough, there is enough heat that can escape because the intake pipe is on an at an angle that I can potentially sometimes get a little bit of smoke that comes out this way with that computer computer fan hooked up, that doesn't happen. But it has been an issue, especially when it's windy outside. The wall that this is against faces the direction that the wind comes in. It kind of comes in this way. But that pipe that I had outside for the exhaust, there was no good way to hide it or mount it so that the wind didn't hit it. So on a windy day, which happens frequently during the winter where this garage is located, would cause the flow in my heater to go backwards. And when that happened, you can imagine the amount of smoke that it blew into this room. So having that external intake and a computer fan driving the air through the opposite direction was necessary because of wind. I don't know if other rocket mass heaters experience that problem or not, but the hippies don't talk about those issues, which is why I get so irritated with those videos. Now it's time for the upgrade. And this thing is gonna make all the difference in the world, a real chimney with fancy damper. 
I made this fancy curly thing out of a piece of scrap steel rod that I had, and I welded it to another piece of rod that goes through these other little pieces of rod that were scrap, and this is a chunk of exhaust pipe that was scrap. Basically, this whole thing is scrap, except for the adapter parts, but it is lined on the inside with, or it has a butterfly valve on the inside, a damper plate that has fiberglass fireproof rope around it, and then it is insulated with fiberglass fireproof rope, which is glued down with fire resistant glue and a sheet of aluminum so that this thing is insulated on the cold side. This will face the fire, that will face the cold air of the outside. When this goes on as the chimney part, it will be insulated from this part up so that the cold air that makes it into the chimney can't absorb the heat out of the room. Hot only goes to cold. It's the absence of energy that is cold. That's the only direction that it goes. You can absorb the heat out of stuff, but you can't put cold, you don't put cold into things. You can only remove energy. But this going on will give me a vertical column of air. It does double duty when I ins insulate this part, because not only does it keep the cold air that comes down into the chimney when the rocket heater is off and it's shut from absorbing the energy that's in the room, but it also forces the exhaust gas that's traveling through this part that isn't heating the room to retain its energy. And therefore the exhaust gas that's in this stays far less dense and creates an upward draft, which pulls air through the heater more efficiently. So now I just need to put this thing together. So there's gonna be an internal pipe and an external pipe with fiberglass between the two just like any normal chimney, insulated chimney part thing that you get is, except those are really expensive. I'm gonna make my own. But first, I gotta drill a hole in the roof. Uncle Buck drill bit time. Originally, I was gonna cheap out when I did that plate on the roof and I was just gonna get a roof vent seal that has a rubber gasket around it because I know that there's absolutely no way that the relatively cold exhaust gas that's coming out of this could ever catch anything on fire. But I figured I'd do it the way you're supposed to. I'd put an actual galvanized steel roof cap on for this chimney pipe and create the clearance necessary so that this is at least an inch away from combustibles, which is to code. Like I said, this thing has never gotten hotter than I could touch. It has felt pretty warm at times, but that is the most. It's never even gotten hot to the point that I couldn't touch it. Most chimneys have the exhaust gas straight off of the fire and they have to be rated. Well, I know that they can be rated up to like 2000 degrees. And if that's the case for a chimney fire, I have a fail safe in place by accident. With my burn being efficient, there shouldn't be any creosote whatsoever inside any part of my rocket mass heater system. But even if there was, and I did have a chimney fire, it would start from where the fire source is and it would move its way through the mass transfer portion. Chimney fires can reach 2000 degrees, which is what those things are rated for. And that's why, because they don't want you to burn your stuff down. It doesn't really matter because even if I had a chimney fire start, the melting point of aluminum is, I believe, around 1700 melting point of aluminum not even it's 1220 degrees fahrenheit which is far below chimney fire type temperatures which means if i had a chimney fire the entirety of my mass transfer portion would collapse and it would put the fire out because no airflow means no fire but even though that's the case i'm still gonna do this the ultra safe way and i have lots of clearance up there and i have an insulated pipe with glass fibers that can't catch on fire but this also gives me peace of mind so Keyboard warriors, put your fingers down because there's nothing to complain about here. I'm doing it the absolute safest way. And it just happens to also be the most efficient way.
chimney is ready to go on. So after I lined up the chimney part on the top, I dropped a funnel down in it to keep the hot air from going out that hole. It wasn't coming out much, but I could feel it when I was up there. The funnel will lift up as I put this in place. To give you an idea of how overkill this is, the dryer vent hose, which is plasticized aluminum, was sitting up against the wooden wall for a year. Now, not that it's winter here all the time, but during all that time, didn't catch the building on fire. So this is massive overkill to make sure that nothing happens. Plus I have this heat reflector shield, which the normal heat reflector shield for the rest of the rocket mass heater, even when it was next to the radiant chamber made out of the helium tank, never even got warm enough that I couldn't touch that. Now it did get pretty hot, it got hotter than this did, but that wall is totally protected from this thing. This bracket is to support the weight of the chimney, so I'm going to set this all up and then I'm going to take the weight off of it and bolt it in place and I have marks. There we go. Overkill. Yeah, that's going nowhere. Fully supported. Another interesting aspect about how this is all put together. All of the interior pipes will collect condensation because after the fire takes place, you get water and carbon dioxide and the water condenses on these pipes and it runs down the inside, but it evaporates. Eventually it does make its way out. All of the interior pipes tuck into each other. So the water flow feeds into the next pipe. It can't catch an edge and run out into the room. The exterior pipes are the opposite. So on this four inch pipe, the outside is top pipe over bottom pipe. So it does go like this, which if there's any type of leakage, then the air going up through will go that way, which is why these are that way. But these adapter pieces don't matter because they have ridges that encase on the inside of the pipe that slides in. So this thing's fully sealed. It might be overkill to tape it, but I would rather not have any exhaust leaks into the inside of my garage. So now, officially, to this point, the rocket mass heater was entirely made out of scraps and it is no longer because I had to buy all these pieces, but I didn't have the metal or the scrap to be able to make them. And these pieces are relatively inexpensive. I think I have less than $100 in this. So now I have an even more highly efficient rocket mass heater for less than 300 bucks, grand total, with a damper that I can shut off from the comfort of the garage. I don't have to go outside and pull a pipe off of a tree and cap it with a cobbled piece of foam and just barely fit it. It's all ready to go. Here's that garbage dryer hose that came out of the window. Look at how much higher my exhaust vent is now. It's like Christmas when you finish decorating. Favorite part is putting the topper on the tree. I'll probably have to put a cage around this, make sure squirrels don't try to go down my chimney. <laughs> There it is, sealed up super tight. Nothing really left to do, but fire it up. This is very exciting. I've been putting off making this chimney and damper system for just under a year. It's time to fire this thing up and see if it works. Gotta make sure it's open <laughs> before I start a fire in it. I don't have a whole lot of wood left, but what I do have, I saved. I always throw a little bit of kindling that I save in here, the little shards from when I split the wood up. And then I plug the fan in, which I should probably just put an on off switch. I get that running because that makes it really easy to get this thing started. See, it only takes a couple seconds to get this thing fired up and have that rocket noise going. Now I did just fire it up, even with a screaming fire going down there. This is room temperature. It'll probably take about an hour before this actually starts to really get at least a little bit warm to the touch. And you can see even right now, without the fan running, the flow is going the way that it's supposed to. It's just not making that rocket noise because there isn't a huge amount of flow because the rest of the system isn't warmed up yet. Woo, the heat coming off of that. Oh man, I started to feel like my shirt was on fire and I was like, I was about to do my outro right here, but now I'm gonna step this way because that helium tank is super hot and it feels like it's gonna burn me. <laughs> to give you an idea of how highly efficient this is versus normal methods of heating, to give you an idea of how highly efficient this actually is, I have a 
propane grill tank, a 20 pound propane tank that I run a radiant heater on sometimes. I try not to use it because it's, it's extremely inefficient. I ran it just earlier and I got it up over 65 degrees in here and it's already 59 degrees now. This is right before I started filming. So I've lost a substantial amount of temperature. If I run this in morning to afternoon, when I get into the shop the next day, even if it's been sub 20 degrees at night, it's still about 60 degrees in here. I'll only lose about five degrees. And during the time that we filmed this video, I've lost six degrees. Using an absolutely minuscule amount of fuel for this nets me a much greater temperature for a much longer period of time than it does if I use the traditional heating method. And it's all because you store all of the energy that you use during combustion inside of the mass and it's dispersed into the room. You guys wanted an update. You got it. This thing works awesome. It takes a lot of time and effort to build. It takes some time and effort to run, but it is incredibly efficient and it works unbelievably well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.